what on earth is an energy park and why is everyone talking about them? Yeah, um, energy park is just one of these terms that sometimes gets thrown around and I have a feeling that some governments and some local planning authority have really latched onto that. Um, I would think Wales is a good example. There's loads of um, goodwill and support and incentive in, in Wales from the kind of planning authority to say, you know, propose us an energy park. We don't just want a wind farm, we want an energy park. And, you know, there are good reasons for that. I mean, if you just think about it practically, um, if you manage to stick a lot of infrastructure in the same site, you're kind of containing the visual impact, the noise impact, the environmental impact into one area. So in a situation where, you know, particularly with wind, there can be a lot of opposition and concern on you know, visual impact and noise are typically the things that developers have to contend with and have to very carefully manage, you know, as they should have to do with, with the local community. Um, I think there's a school of thought that says, well, if you're going to build a wind farm here anyway and have to go through all of that, why not add solar? Why not add storage? Put it all in one place. It's all then going to look more industrial, but at least it's going to be in one spot. <laughs> so I think that's maybe the sort of planning argument. And the other obvious argument is grid. And, you know, you talk to any developer pretty much anywhere in Europe these days, they're all going to have a moan about grid. Um, and grid is the thing that makes development really difficult. It's really expensive. As in connections. Yeah, as in connecting, you know, finding a connection that you can actually export your power as a generator or as a battery, have access to both import and export. And that's because, you know, our grids were not built to have all this distributed um, intermittent renewable generation. So um, in some, you know, particularly in the remoter parts of the country, where the demand isn't so high, the grid is not you know, set out to really take in huge amounts of power and capacity. So having access to grid is really, really valuable. And if you have one of those grid connections, I think developers increasingly are like, well, how do I make the most of it? And again, that's where the energy park concept comes in. Rather than just putting a solar farm onto this grid connection, where realistically you're going to use that grid connection only during the day, and you're no. only going to... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> but also, you know, even during the day, you're only going to use kind of the maximum limit of the grid connection during the peak sort of... During the boring bit, yeah. During, yeah, during lunchtime if it's sunny. Yeah. Um, and the rest of the day, you're actually sitting on a lot of spare grid. So not surprising that developers are thinking about, well, how do I use that spare capacity and... You know, you can combine wind and solar, you can combine solar and storage. People are now talking about combining you know, hydrogen and, and lots of other stuff as well. But yeah, it comes down to how do you make the most of your grid connection and also spread the cost that frankly is a big part of your, your construction cost. It's actually paying for that grid connection, spread it across multiple projects.